today's lesson we're going to be looking at a bit of Newtonian mechanics and in particular we're going to be looking at resolving forces on an inclined plane. This is a question for the AS Physics course um, whether it be with AQA, Edexcel or OCR and it is a question that comes up uh, regularly and also a question that uh, students often find difficult. So let's have a look at this now. So we have an object here and ordinarily without any kind of uh, impediment or obstruction gravity would be acting on the mass of that object and pushing it directly downwards. So we have this vector line here which is the force of gravity acting on the object, in other words weight, uh, always acts downwards. But with an inclined slope uh, what happens in practice is that part of that force will A work parallel to the slope so the block wants to slide down like this and B part of it will work perpendicular to the slope pushing the object into the surface of the slope so in other words the presence of an inclined slope breaks the force vector weight up into two component parts so we can say that these are component forces that make up mg or the force of gravity acting on the block and over here we can see more clearly that when we take these two component forces, one will be perpendicular to the slope and one will be parallel to the slope, which is going to create always a 90 degree angle. And for that reason, we always are able to create a triangle. And we will be able to use trigonometry to calculate the quantity of the two different component forces. So this question always ends up with a calculation based on trig functions. Okay, so there's typically two things that they can ask you uh, with this sort of question. One, they'll ask you to calculate the component of weight that is acting along the slope. Or, two, they could be asking you to calculate the component of weight that is acting into the slope, or perpendicular to the slope, which would be the orange vector. So, let's have a look at the question then. It's 10 kilograms, the object. Um, so the first thing we want to do is to work out the value of the force weight. Quite simply, we just calculate uh, mass times gravity. Mass is 10 kilograms, as standard SI units for uh, mass, and um, gravity is 9.81 um, meters per second squared. So it's an acceleration working on um, the mass. So we do this little calculation up here, so mg will be equal to 9.81 times 10 which is 98.1 newtons. Now that's great if the object was able to just continue falling down without um, the obstruction of the um, incline then that would be um, all we need to do. But of course the incline brings other factors in notably that this force of weight gets split into two parts which we've already discussed. So the question is interested in the component or part that is moving along the slope, or in this case it's actually moving down the slope. So we're actually going to be calculating the value of the purple line here. Of course it's got to be less than the value of the force of weight because um, the weight has been split into two parts. So on the diagram if it hasn't already been drawn you add to the vector weight the perpendicular component and then the parallel component to the slope. It makes a triangle and from there we can start to fill in some things. This is a right angle triangle, by the way. Um, we should probably put that in. Now, how do we know that this is 40 degrees in here? Well, we do that using geometry. We have a triangle here. This is 90 degrees. That means that angle's got to be 50. Now, if that angle's 50, um, this is also a 90 degree angle. So that angle there's got to be 40. So similar triangles. Once we've got the 40 in there, we need to establish what um, side of the triangle we're interested in. And we're interested in, as it says up here, the uh, component weight acting along the slope. So we're interested in this line here. Now I know it's removed from the slope, but it's running parallel to the slope. So let's mark this side x. We want to find this out. Now, we already know the uh, longest side, the hypotenuse. Uh, we just calculated that. That's 98 point one newtons. So here we have a triangle um, and we can now apply 
trigonometry to it. We're interested in the side that's opposite and we have the hypotenuse. So we can use sine. So sine 40, sine 40 is equal to opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 98.1. Rearrange that, bring the 98.1 to the other side, so you've got sine 40 multiplied by 98.1 is equal to x. Calculate that. Next is equal to 63.1 newtons. If we've been interested in the uh, component of weight which is perpendicular to the slope, then we'd be interested in this line, the orange line, which is the adjacent. And the adjacent and the hypotenuse are part of the trig ratio involving cosine. So it would be exactly the same calculation, but it would be cosine uh, 40 equals, uh, let's say call that y, y over 98.1. You bring that across. And rule of thumb is, is that uh, if you're doing calculations in the direction of the slope, the component in the direction of the slope, you'll be using sine. If you're doing calculations perpendicular to the slope or pushing into the slope, you'll be using the cosine ratio. Okay, so that's a little example on how to resolve forces on an inclined slope. A question that came up in an exam paper, um, it was an AQA paper, was this one, very similar to what we've just done. The incline is 25 degrees, so you'd build your triangle, and it says acting along the slope. You're interested in the, the calculate the component of weight of the car and the passengers acting along the slope. So we're interested in this purple vector here. So we're going to be using along the slope is sine, um, and we would need to establish what the weight was. I think they've given us the mass at the top here. Uh, yeah, mass, and we just multiply that by 9.81. Um, so then we would do the sine of 25 multiplied by um, brackets 8,300 kilograms multiplied by 9.81. If we're interested in perpendicular to the slope, then we'd use the cosine and 25 degrees. So pretty simple. Uh, once you know how to firstly draw the diagram and apply sine to the uh, force in parallel to the slope, uh, cosine to the force perpendicular to the slope. Okay, I hope that gives you a few little tips on how to deal with these inclined um, plane questions, and I'll see you again next time.